All right, what's up everyone? Okay, so today we are gonna be doing um, some more ice fishing. I am actually um, gonna be setting up again for some more pike. As you guys can see, I did buy myself another tip up beaver dam. So I will show you guys a quick um, clip of uh, me setting it up and how I like to rig tip ups when it comes to um, fishing for pike. All right guys, um, so I just got this new beaver dam tip up. Um, this is actually my first time actually owning one. Um, I owe, currently I own a, a Eagle Claw tip up, but um, I decided to upgrade. Yes, I know that these newer ones aren't like the best quality compared to like the old ones, but I didn't want to have to go drive and find myself a, a older Beaver Dan tip up. So straight out of the box, this is how it looks like. Obviously this is the flag. Um, I know Beaver Dan, they're flags are like really flexible which I don't like too much but then it is what it is yeah so I'm gonna be using um actual beaver dam ice fishing line it's this black thread what is this sitting at I don't even know because I have this rigged onto my um onto my other tip up take whatever poundage you want but this is gonna be pretty much my main line um I'm gonna be probably putting the rest of the spool on here because um currently the other half of the spool is on my other tip up so it should be enough for uh, this setup right here okay so all right to begin pretty much I'm gonna feed it through this loop this um this, I think it's I believe it's like a, a line guide it helps um, keep your line clear of the, the spool itself on the tip up okay so right off the bat I'm just gonna tie a regular I believe it's like a surgeon's knot just so it doesn't pull off when um if a fish happens to spool me and then after that I'm just gonna tie your regular slip knot I don't know how much of this you guys can actually see but it's gonna be a regular slip knot okay so if I was to put the slip knot the standard slip knot right on the spool itself it's clearly gonna slide when um I'm trying to reel it up so what I like to do is here's a little trick is I take the slip knot I twist it into like a figure eight and suddenly you loop it back on itself and suddenly you have two loops. This provides enough tension. I do this on all my spin rods too. This provides enough tension that um, it will not slide once you have it on tight. See that? Like even if I tug on it, here, let me show you. Even if I tug on it, it's like barely even sliding so that's what keeps it on just so I can put enough tension on this line so just your standard spooling I'm just gonna spool all this line I'm just gonna work my way going from the bottom part to the top and just evenly distribute this line I know over time the line's not gonna be even no more because um just from constantly just uh, rewinding it quickly but yeah I will get back to you guys when I have this all set and ready all right, so for the main line, I'm gonna tie in the swivel. It's a it's a spur swivel. It's a number five, I believe, sitting at a 120 pound test. So the knot I'm tying is actually just a regular uh, surgeon's knot, followed by a like a slip knot. Um, that's just my go-to for everything when I tie, when I'm tying lures, or if I don't want to lose uh, something, pretty much it's my go-to knot. So I'm gonna slide that up against their taunt so it doesn't break off just like so now that I have the swivel tied in I'm gonna make my leader line so typically for my leader line either uh, I tend to like to use smaller poundage like I want to say like uh, between 8 and 10 and then I tie it straight to my straight to my swivel but in this case I only have uh, trialing 30 pound so I'm just gonna work with that um, I like to use this 30 pound as my my actual leader leader so it's gonna go from like the swivel to the smaller poundage and on the end of that smaller poundage usually I put in a perfection loop and then I make my leader so my leaders I tend to tie them ahead of time and I put it on one of these boards um, keeps everything neat as you can see I'm losing a lot of my leaders because I, I have them uh, on my rigs already and then I haven't tied any fresh ones but um I make make them fairly long like maybe around these ones are only a foot long 
but those are like my ass like my pike leaders but because of this because I don't have a small line I'm gonna probably make like a four foot leader just so um I have a, a, at least a little more uh, clearance when it comes to uh, visibility and the fish won't see it quite as much compared to that black line so I'm just gonna tie a perfection loop um, I'm not gonna show you guys how to tie this knot um, but you look it up there's a lot of great videos out there on how to tie it um, this is actually one of my go-to loops for tying in lures and fly fishing so it's kind of hard with the sticker line I'm gonna make it kind of big because it's gonna be a uh, well this one's gonna be smaller because I'm gonna be putting it directly onto the swivel itself just gonna put tension on it so it sees uh, seats itself the knot seats itself so now I'm gonna cut off the tail to tag in just like so I'm gonna roughly measure out I don't know four feet of line four feet of line works here because um it's fairly uh shallow in this area so again though the water I'm fishing right here is only five feet so I don't really need it to be that deep all right so then on to this I don't know what to call this. It's um, a snap. It's like it's not a snap swivel. It's just a snap, pretty much. So onto that, I'm gonna be tying a. Uh, I don't know what this knot's called. Pretty much, it's gonna be like a uh, perfection loop, pretty much. That's on the actual uh, snap itself. Okay, horribly explained, but it's just what I'm doing. I'm just keeping it so it swings. And it makes uh, the knot look cleaner too compared to having like a big bulky knot. I'll show you guys a close up in a bit. After I have this tied. So the reason why I use a uh, snap is um, it it's better for line maintenance. I don't like having hooks or like hanging around. So when I'm done fishing for the year um, or even like for the day, I just unsnap the hook out. And this way I could just take my my swivel either directly put it back onto the spool itself or else I would hook it back onto this this uh, platform swing it around and hook it onto one of these rings it's just cleaner for maintenance uh, in my opinion and I have these guys already pre-tied ahead of time just it's just that today I didn't have it ready because uh, I was anticipating buying a tipo today but I did so this is where I'm at. So I'm just making sure it's seated nice. Gotta cut off this tag end fairly close. Just like so. It's kind of hard because um these knots that I'm tying, they're not really meant for thick line. I don't think that will work. I lose a pike, you know why? Alright, so let's get this on. The swivel. So I don't know how close you guys can see this, but there's my swivel. So what I do is I take that perfection loop. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna feed it right into the eye of the swivel. Uh, come on, buddy. Work with me. Just like so. So I'm gonna I actually put the whole entire knot through it. Just like that. Now I'm gonna take the the other end, the one with the snap on, and I'm gonna feed it through that perfection loop. And now I'm just gonna slide it all the way through. And again, um, this is just me being lazy, I guess you could say. So just like that, this is how it looks like. Perfection loop, it, I pretty much looped it on itself over the swivel. So it's just gonna be just like that. Um, if I ever decide to switch it out with like a, a smaller, smaller poundage leader for like Wally, for example, then I could easily do that. That's why I put a lot of loops in my lines. Um, yes, it's me being lazy, but it works and it's better for, uh, it's more convenient for when you're doing multi-species fishing. And that's what I like to do, so. All right, so I'm gonna reel this back up onto the spool. Sorry, I didn't think it was going to be this long of a video. Um, 
probably gonna be a separate video from what I'm doing today fishing. So I'm gonna roll it up close to there. Okay, so because I am using shiners and they like to swim a lot, I am actually using a number five split shot uh it's a if, if if the if the shiner continues to swim a lot then um i'm gonna double up on it so it doesn't so it keeps it down so again i put it probably i want to say five to six inches from the hook itself um if it's walleye i go higher but because it's because it's pike i'm just keeping it low because pike pike they're really opportunistic so and they're very uh, aggressive, so they don't really care when it comes to like visuals in a way. So, I gotta get the snap open. There we go. So the tri hook that I'm using is actually a, a size number eight Mustad. So that's what I'm using. And yeah, there you go. Um, when it comes to setting it up, I'm gonna select, usually I, for pike, I like to keep it like maybe, I wanna say between one to two feet off the bottom. And then I actually use, um, uh, let me get it out. I use bobblers, tiny bobblers. These little guys right here as uh, depth indicators. So I put them in place just so I know how deep I'm setting it. So like, let's pretend I'm fishing three feet, three feet of water. I'm gonna set it up to two feet, and I'm just gonna put on one of these bobbers on the line, just like so. So my tip up will be set up like that with the minnow. And there you go. That's how I set up my rigs. Um, to each their own. This is just like, this is exactly how I like to do it. It's just cause um, I do a lot of uh, small little things just for the convenience of itself. Um, and I still catch fish so there we go there we have it and let's get this guy set up thank you for watching guys until next time peace